What's up guys, it's the uh, Dirt Worst here. Slightly different setting, because uh, we're gonna talk about something a little different today. So, uh, you may be wondering now, what if I don't want to uh, tourniquet my arms and wrap them up you know, like a crazy person? Are there any other options? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're gonna take a quick break from the blood flow restriction topic just for a second, uh, but we're still gonna leverage something that I talk about pretty often, which is fatigue. How do we use fatigue? Uh, to improve or enhance our playing ability, right? So quick recap, we talked about flexion and extension in your forearms, okay? So in this video, we're gonna talk about three things with your forearms <clears throat> uh, that you can leverage to play a little bit better. We're gonna talk about pre-exhaustion, we're gonna talk about supersets, and we're gonna talk about burnout at the very end, okay? So with pre-exhaustion, that's a principle from bodybuilding where uh, let's say that you wanted really big biceps, right? And you, I don't know, you can only, you know, do biceps curls with, uh, I don't know, like 20 pounds or something like that. We got to think about what other muscles use the biceps as well that we can load to a greater degree. So like when you do rows or lat pull downs or pull ups or whatever you want to call them, uh, you do use your biceps and you're handling a lot more weight. So what's realistically going to happen here is uh, if you were to do several bicep curls before you go do pull-ups, yes, the pull-ups are going to be harder because you're using your biceps more, which likely will cause more growth in the biceps. Um, <clears throat> uh, same thing with a superset. Super set. Basically, what that means is that you go back and forth between two different exercises with a particular focus. So that would be like bicep curls and then rows, and then bicep curls and then rows, and then kind of going back and forth between the two. Um, and then finally with burnout, basically what you do is at the very end of the workout when uh, you really don't have you know, as much motor control, um, as much stamina as you did at the beginning. I, um, find my dogs in here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, at the very end, when you're in that kind of burnout mode, basically what you do is you just do bicep curls until you can't do them anymore. Right. And what that does is that stimulates the muscle as maximally as we can and maximal stimulation usually elicits some kind of growth. So uh, to take that same principle and apply it to Clone Hero, uh, basically what we can do is we're, with pre-exhaustion, we're going uh, to exhaust the extensor and flexor muscles in our forearms. And this is going to be twofold, okay? It's going to make your stamina a hell of a lot better at the game, and it's going to give you nice, big, sexy forearms, which if I ask the question, could you look better doing stuff you're basically already doing, the answer is always going to be yes. Um, so it's a really easy way to look uh, just a little bit better. So uh, it's very easy. You have to find an object in your house that's five to 10 pounds um, because what we want to do is we want to elicit some kind of fatigue. We want to elicit some kind of fatigue uh, during playing, after playing, relative to playing, right? Um, right here, what I've got is I've got a 10 pound dumbbell. It's you know whatever, it's 10 pounds. Uh, but the technique is very simple. It's very straightforward, okay? What you want to do is you want to think shoulders back, you know, good posture, right? I'm going to rotate my elbow to the inside of my body and we're going to do two things. We're going to curl and then we're going to extend. We're going to curl and then we're going to extend. And if you can keep your arm nice and straight when you're doing it, that's good. Um, I found this is a very low stress way to get a ton of repetitions in, uh, it helps strengthen the elbow usually helps with a little bit of golfer and tennis elbow. And this is all you do. Okay, you just go back and forth between flexion and extension. You want to find a relatively lightweight because your, your forearm muscles are type 1 muscle fibers, which means they're going to respond better to high repetition movements. And then basically, you just want to find a point of fatigue. You want to find that point where you're like, man, I, I can't quite get my hand up. I can't quite curl my hand up as much you know, as when I started. That could be anywhere from 20 to 100 reps. Uh, you never know that it, it's entirely individual. Uh, so that's why we constantly focus on the concept of fatigue, because I can't just say do a set of 10. <laughs> that's so arbitrary. That means nothing. You know what I mean? Because my 10 is not your 10. 10 pounds to me might feel very different than 10 pounds to you, right? So just cause I used a 10 today and it was nice and easy. You might start with like a three, you never know. Uh, if you don't have a dumbbell, find a household object that's ergonomic to grip, and it's the exact same thing. <clears throat> so, what the, uh, the three options, okay? Pre-exhaustion, supersets, and, uh, and, and a burnout. With pre-exhaustion, you wanna do a large amount of repetitions right before you start playing. 
50 to 100, you want to do a lot, okay? Uh, I say 50 to 100 as a broad range because I, I don't know what's going to make you tired, who knows, you know? Uh, you might get to 20 and be like, oh shit, this is a lot harder than I thought, right? So um, <clears throat> that's the pre-exhaustion, and what's going to happen is after you start playing, you have to fight through fatigue to be able to bring your same level of playability, and by default that amplifies your playability uh, the next time you come back. You're going to be better because you had to fight through some fatigue, which made you a stronger player. The next option as a superset would be to go back and forth between playing and repetitions. Playing repetitions, playing repetitions, okay. Um, that would be a song that challenges you uh, on a skill set that you want to improve. Could be fretting, could be strumming, whatever it is. If you want to improve your stamina on that, play the song, do a handful of repetitions, take a little break. Play the song, handful of repetitions, take a break, repeat, okay. Um, it's just like your normal practice, except you are intermittently adding in wrist curls, just tiny little wrist curls. It's, it's nothing crazy, okay. Now, um, for the burnout at the very end, I forgot the term, uh, for the burnout at the very end, the idea here is, you know, this, this follows the same flow as a normal workout. In a workout, you focus on something that requires the most skill first, and then the most power output next, and then you kind of finish out with whatever you would consider auxiliary work or things that you would need to work on. Uh, so in this regard, you know, when we're focusing on a skill, that's when you're kind of playing at your most vigorous. You're playing fast, you're playing hard, all that good stuff. After that, you might be playing some songs just to kind of cool down, you know, have a little bit of fun with the game. It's less serious, it's less intense, you know what I mean? And then finally, when you're done, that's that point that you get to in the day where you're like, man, I'm just, I'm just not doing as good as I did when I started, okay? When you get to that point where you're like, man, I'm just, you know, uh, I guess I'm done for the day, that's when you want to grab that dumbbell and do the same thing as the pre-exhaustion. You want to find fatigue, going to be anywhere from 50 to 100 reps. And what's going to happen now is your body has a lot more to recover from even though your playing wasn't necessarily affected. The fact that you added in an exercise that used the same muscles that you used when you played, okay, that's gonna generate more fatigue, and then once you recover from that, you're gonna come back a stronger player, okay? Uh, you'll notice I talk about strength a lot, and the reason why I talk about strength is you Clone Hero players have half the equation down. You have the speed, you do not have the force, okay? To get better, physically speaking, in any regard, any sport ever, you have to be strong and quick. That's just, that's how improvements are made, right? So you guys are great at figuring out how to get faster, okay? I'm, I'm here to teach you how to get stronger as a player. That, by default, will increase your speed and your skill. It's a great thing to do, okay? Quick recap. Pre-exhaustion, supersets, burnout. Pre-exhaustion, a lot of reps beforehand, fine fatigue beforehand, but not enough that kills your playing. You still have to be able to play, okay? Two, supersets. Once you're warmed up, once you actually get in your playing groove, play a song, do a set. Anywhere from, and you would do a little bit less at this point because you want to be able to do it repeatedly. You do anywhere from 10 to 30 reps. Um, do that until you find fatigue. And then once you just can't play anymore, that's when you know that you've actually engaged and used your muscles in the forearms, flexion and extension, enough to actually produce an effect physiologically. Uh, and then finally, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, with the burnout at the very end, that's probably, I would argue that's the easiest one to leverage because you get to have all the fun playing and practicing and all that good stuff. And at the very end, you take three to five minutes maybe and you just do some extra wrist curls. It's gonna make you have really good looking arms and it's gonna make you a better player. I mean, that's just, that's hard to argue with, you know. Uh, if you have any questions about these concepts, I mean, they, they're basic workout concepts uh, that can absolutely be applied to this to this game. Um, I, would, I would even argue that this would make you a better guitar player, not just plastic guitar, but like a, a, an actual better musician. So uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Uh, we will be getting back to blood flow restriction uh, with the next round of, of videos, but I figured I would, you know, I figured I would give an option to people that think it's weird still or have concerns like safety concerns I mean there aren't any realistically unless you have like blood pressure problems but you know um, but yeah I want to have an option for people out there that want to improve uh, physically but don't really have the means like I described before so let me know if you have any questions um, it's a it's a relatively easy concept to employ uh, just give it a shot and you'll see the difference so thanks guys